This year at Wintech we've got three major projects which are closely interlinked and what they are is the virtual hub, the enrolment project and my learning project. So I want to give you an overview of those three projects and how they're all linked and um, give you the vision. Um, what we're looking to do is build a whole new online world for students, a whole sort of virtual community and interact with our students in a much better way than we're currently doing obviously overall to drive further engagement and further enrolments. So let me get started. My project is um, the virtual hub and that starts at the um, beginning of the sales cycle. So what we have here along the bottom is the major milestones in a student journey um, through from prospect to lead all the way through commencing study and through to alumni. The 10% is a very key milestone because at that point in the journey this Wintec actually gets funded for the student. So the Virtual Hub project is going to focus primarily on redeveloping and redesigning the information to drive leads through. Um, the lead management process is something that's not actually um, being managed online at Wintec at the moment, so this is a new process. Currently prospects are going straight to applicants. So my project is about introducing this whole new leads management um, Concept. So what are we going to do there? First of all, we're going to start by redesigning the public website with a whole UX feel, taking into account the different personas that are going to be accessing the website, what motivates them, what are their fears, what drives them, what's going to engage them. Um, part of that incorporates adding live data and BI into the site, um, redeveloping content in a new, fun and engaging way. Creating apps, so to drive engagement, an example might be a book, a tour on campus app. Um, the more we can get people to want to book a tour, then they sign up to Wintech, and then they start to become a lead. Um, we also need to engage all the different kinds of personas that are going to come to Wintech, so that's including the employers, in the community, the research market, all of that. So it isn't just about students, um, there are other key areas coming to the public website. And another um, key thing is we're going to look to reduce the admin overhead of maintaining all of this content. So as much as possible we're going to automatically create content, pull it from master data sources like ARIAN and CRM. Um, the program information is a must. So we'll look to pull all the program information from ARIAN instead of it being manually maintained as it currently is. And as well as that, we're going to have an operations stream which is looking to widen out the number of people that can actually maintain the content as well. So it's not just bottlenecked with ITS and marketing. So all of these initiatives are to drive people to sign up to Wintech and then effectively become a lead. Now at that point, they'll get a container which we haven't decided what that is yet, but the container is going to be the technology that's it's their virtual world. The idea is no matter what stage they're at, they come to this container and they see information that's relevant and personalised for them. So the first step is all about leads management. So they've signed up to Wintech, and what we're going to do now is try and filter out the leads or fully qualify them so that what's the, we actually might look to reduce the number of people applying at Wintech but the quality of the people coming through are going to be better. So what we're having now is people are coming onto the public website and then going straight into sign up, enrol at Wintech, and um, they're just, they're not fully qualified, and they might be applying for, you know, certificate in tourism and certificate in automotive engineering, for example. So they haven't really decided what they want. So this whole piece is about filtering and refining and getting those people um, to be more fully qualified leads and marketing can do nurture marketing on the ones that are serious. So some ideas we've got here is one is to create an upload centre. What that's all about is um, there's a lot of information that you need to put in the enrolment process that's quite cumbersome, we're looking to simplify that down. If we can get people to upload some of the basic information sooner rather than later then that um, makes this process even easier. Um, as well as that, if somebody is quite serious about applying at Wintech and they upload, say, a birth certificate, for example, before they started to apply, marketing can tell 
These people are very strong leads. They've gone to the trouble of uploading their birth certificate. Um, let's focus on those people and get them through to actually applying. Um, we're going to have relative or relevant links. That's going to um, just help people drive them through to the next phase to actually apply and make it easy and simple. Um, Timetables obviously are going all the way through, but what we want to do is refine timetables as much as possible. There's a um, big issue at the moment with you know timetables just changing constantly. So what we'll try and do is we'll get more and more um, information. We'll try and display a relevant timetable. We want to bring in social media here. So this might be, if you're not sure about what you want to study, um, maybe you can chat with a tutor or a student to find out a bit more about the program, get a bit more context and key dates so you know where you are, um, what you have to do in the process. At that point, once we switch over to being an applicant, that falls into Ian's project under the enrolment project. So I hand over to Ian. Thanks, Bianca. So. Um, Bianca's talked a lot about the, the design and how we're going to construct the container. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll just continue on with that journey. So one of the most important things we're going to do is we're going to redesign the enrolment process and form. Again, following along with the um, design philosophy we've talked about earlier, simplifying the process, making it easier. We're also going to bring across a lot of the widgets that we've already built. The widgets that we've already built, so Upload Centre comes across, Timetable comes across, becomes hopefully more firm. Social media comes across, and dates and other some of these other items may come across as well. We're going to build in some new widgets. Again, we maybe bring some of these around as we uh, change some of these around as we go through the process. So interactive help, maybe instant messaging. Status indicators and key milestones for students, so they can see where they are in the uh, application stroke enrolment process. The ap ability to appeal uh, re rejection or request some logic as to why you've been not been accepted on a course. Again, all online, nice and simple. Payment options, so how, how can I fund my course, um, links to study link, things like that. And for... For staff, we're also going to, to make sure, not necessarily in the container, so let's put that down below, that there's stats and insights, so um, how many applications there are being completed, how many are successful, how many people have, have, um, have paid for their, uh, their course, and things like that. So some key stats. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to focus our resources on the right area. And again, in CRM and things, allow um, staff the ability to record interactions and schedule follow-ups for either themselves or other members of staff. Um, in terms of the enrolment process, we're going to look to drive uh, invoicing into Tech One. So data management will go in there, so that's kind of a, an off offline thing for staff. In the enrolment process, again, some of these, we're already kind of over the board, but some of these things will continue. So payments, instructions and links and progress, where, where it's at, what's outstanding account balance and top-ups, um, the ability to browse sort of catalogues of other products and services, so accommodation, e-books or technology you may be interested in, online orientation, so where to find information uh, about the course, suggested reading, timetable, maps, other sort of things for the relevant for students, uh, timetable we've kind of already talked about again, this would firm up as we go through the process, um, key dates, and the probably the final thing we've got at the moment is message groups. So ability to share content with students and or staff at that stage. And that's where we then hand over again to Richard, who's going to talk from commencing study. Sorry, commencing study. Do you think, do you think so? <coughs> okay, so, <coughs> so um, uh, I'm uh, so my, my perspective is when the student is studying, so when the student starts studying to when they finish their program. And what we're really interested in doing is getting as many students as possible across the 10% mark, because that's when we receive funding, and having them complete the programs 
Um, so they learn, they lead with the skills, um, have a positive experience, and hopefully they re-enroll. Um, so the widgets that we're looking at in this space while they're learning all tend towards those. So what have we got? We've got, um, first of all, um, utilising the, the attendance application that was created last year. Um, we're going to be feeding that information through to SEC, so they can chase up students who haven't been attended, attending, which is an early indicator um, that they're not going to reach that 10% mark. We're going to provide students with um, a course overview, which will pull information from, from Moodle, which will describe um, for each course they're doing, how they're performing, what their predicted grade is. So with the effort they've done to date, we reckon they get a C, um, and some useful information around that for them. So they can clearly see what they're studying and how they're performing. We will also be providing students um, with an e-portfolio. So many departments at the moment use um, Mahara, and that's good. Um, WinTech also has its own developed e-portfolio, and we'll be providing that to students too. So they can evidence their learning to tutors, to peers, to employees, whoever they want to. We'll be providing them with Yammer, so they can um, create their groups and, and generate their own discussions, which they're already doing organically anyway. We want to enable that through further online. We want to provide tutors information to, um, to their performance, um, so that tutors can, can give a hand and provide suggested assistance. So if back at this, say, 5% mark they're struggling, tutor becomes aware of it, and the tutor can intervene early. And this is something in our research last year that students said they were really keen for tutors to do, so we're going to put that in there. Um, orientation information, which will initially be the classic orientation you know, information that the students have been receiving for decades, but as we go through the course, it will include information as well about exams. So we'll orient students to, um, to exams and finals um, if they haven't been through them before. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, we've got continued um, links. So the X links from the beginning will change as the student um, progresses through. Um, we're going to have the student uh, self-service uh, learning information. So for each course, there's going to be particular areas which students typically find difficult, and we want to pull it up through from Moodle for um, students to access themselves. Um, a message board from the tutors so that daily messages, whatever the tutors need to get to students urgently, um, appears there. Students also ask for a, a rich calendar, which isn't just um, be in this room at this time for this class, but it's also in this class on Tuesday we'll be reading chapter 3, please come prepared, and so there's actionable information in the calendar for them. And, and that completes well, yeah, what the students want to see. So again, it's to is to make sure they get this 10% mark for our funding and then give them as much support and clarity um, as we go forward um, so they complete their program, complete their course and they complete their program. And that's a summary really. So what we've, we've, we've tried to do is identify the students early on and nurture them through to leads um, and then qualify them so that only those who really should be applying are applying and then we care for them through the 10% course completed and out to alumni afterwards. Thank you.